Hello, I'm going to go over how to install the Gravity Forms event tracking or event tracking for Gravity Forms. Just make sure you have Gravity Forms installed as of this video 2.59 and the event tracking uh, 2.48. With both Gravity Forms and event tracking for Gravity Forms installed, you would go to Forms and then go to Settings. And then you're going to see event tracking right here. And by default, the measurement protocol is going to be enabled. You don't need to worry about that. Um, just go ahead and switch over to Tag Manager and save the settings. And then what you want to do is uh, you want to track UTM variables. And you also want to install Tag Manager if you don't already have it installed. And then um, just put in your uh, Tag Manager ID, and I'll show you how to do that real quick. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to go to uh, sign into Tag Manager. And then you would go to uh, your container and then you would click on admin. Oh, I'm sorry, I skipped a step. Uh, here is your uh, GTM ID. So you could just grab that or if you have another Tag Manager plugin that requires you to insert the stuff in. Uh, you can do that as well. And so you would take this ID and then you would go over here and enter that in right here. So um, in the tooltip, it shows uh, you know, you're using Tag Manager and you'll want to make the form AJAX only. And I have uh, an advanced section here where you can choose AJAX only just to make all your forms AJAX. Or when you insert the form, you can choose AJAX only. You just refer to the Gravity Forms documentation on that. So let's go ahead and save the settings. And then we should be good to go. We will check to see if Tag Manager is installed. And what I'm using is a Chrome extension called uh, Tag Assistant. And you can just enable that refresh and then it'll tell you if tag manager is indeed installed and it's all green so you're good the next step is you want to have a gravity form so if you don't already have one you can just go to forms and add new and kind of go from there right now i have a contact form that i just set up just so i copied this one from my website so and then when you're in the form you can either hover over here and go to event tracking or if you're in the edit uh, feature, you can go to uh, event tracking from here as well. And <clears throat> what you'll want to do is you'll want to set up a feed, which is every time a form is submitted, this feed will run. Um, and this feed will send on data to uh, analytics. So you can skip this UA code thing. Um, for category, I recommend uh, just form and then for action, I recommend just submission. Event label, you can uh, leave blank. It'll have a default um, form ID and the form title. Um, and then you have merge tags as well that you can put in here. Um, one thing about the merge tags is you do not want to send any personal identif identif uh, personal information <laughs> sorry, uh, to uh, Tag Manager. So you don't want to send you know first or last name or email or anything like that. Um, but you can send like a company name, for example, or a website or, you know, anything you, you can possibly think of. For now, we're just going to send the uh, entry ID and the form ID. Pardon me, I get all this cool stuff and then uh, let's just do a form title. Form title. Oh, there it is. Okay. And for value, I don't have any um, e-commerce on this right now. Um, but one caveat is like with Google Analytics 3, you can only send an integer here. So uh, 10 would work, but 10.99 will not. This would be rounded up to just 11. Um, with Google Analytics 4, you can actually send something like uh, that along with to Google Analytics 4, so that's just something to keep in mind if you actually want to add like a total field um, here. 
So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save that. And then we can just verify that the uh, all the information is there. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a test submission on the front end of the site. So let's go ahead and insert our form. And then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the form, contact us. I'm using the gravity forms block, by the way, for this. And view page. And what I'm going to show here is I have a Chrome extension called Data Slayer installed. And what that does, oh, pardon me. What that does is it shows everything that's being sent on. Uh, to Tag Manager, and we haven't had Tag Manager set up yet, but I'm just gonna show you that it is sending the data. So what I'm gonna do is just, you know, put in my information here. And then, um, see, support list, no, no. Subject, test, your message, test, and then I'm going to submit it. And you'll see Data Slayer pop up, all this information. Um, so for example, uh, the event that's being sent to Tag Manager is called uh, GF Track Event. And then you can see form submission, you can see my entry ID, my form ID, contact us, value is blank, and then some miscellaneous data that's also being sent. And you'll see that I have a uh, GF Track Source, Medium, Campaign, Term, Content. And what that's being done is that's being sent by UTM parameter. So, um, if I Google uh, UTM Builder and it has a uh, campaign URL builder, and so what I could do is I have beaverbuilder.local, which is my local install, campaign ID, and I could say, let's just change the campaign name, for example, um, GA4 test, campaign term, gravity forms, and then content will be form submission. And so here you would just copy the URL, and then if I go back to this, it'll have all my ETM parameters in there. So what you could do is you can set up a link or you know something to your form and or a campaign to your form, and it'll fill it out. And so I'm just going to go down here, and I'll show you that the new uh, data is being sent on. I got to put something in here. Okay, so if we scroll down in Data Slayer, you'll see that you know, Google Banner, GA4 Test, the term is tracking, the content is tracking. So you should be all set there. So next, we'll, I'll show you how to set up the uh, uh, Tag Manager variables in a separate video. I just want to quickly add, I'll just go back to the URL builder for the UTM parameters. Um, just so for uh, you know privacy purposes, to let you know that if you do use the UTM parameters, it'll show up in local storage on the client. So if you go to Chrome and application and go to local storage, uh, you'll see a key Google Analytics UTM, and it's stored as uh, JSON. And what it will do is wherever they come in the site, there's some JavaScript running on the front end and it'll store the UTM parameters as local storage. So when you submit the form, it'll try to find the local storage variables for the UTM variables. And if it does, then it will send them on. So uh, it'll work, you know, regardless of where they come in your site, you can track the UTM variables and then send those on to analytics. And, you know, just an FYI, they are stored in local storage on the client. So if you have like a cookie or a privacy uh, thing, just make sure to add that in there.